Hi, I'm Ryan. Welcome to the CorelDRAW DVD for screen printers. We at RyanNet wanted to create this DVD in order to show the ins and outs of CorelDRAW and how it can be used to enhance the artwork side of your screen printing experience. The DVD is taught by Marvin. He has over 30 years of screen printing experience and is extremely versed in CorelDRAW and in artwork. Throughout this DVD, Marvin's going to take you from basic to advanced techniques in CorelDRAW. If possible, watch the DVD while you're on your computer or laptop so you can follow along with Marvin as he teaches. We've also included for you this quick CorelDRAW reference guide. The reference guide covers important control features and hotkeys in Corel. Use this to enhance your experience and make CorelDRAW easy to navigate as you learn. We hope you enjoy this DVD and you'll learn a lot. Welcome to CorelDRAW Basics. My name is Marvin and I will be your instructor for this little session. Today we're going to start with a very basic setup of your work area. One thing with Corel is learn all your functions, your file, your edit, views, layouts, arrangements, effects, bitmaps, text, tools, windows, and of course Corel always has a very comprehensive help file in the program itself. Today we're going to set up the parameters of the page. Most people that are outputting film will be doing it by 13 by 18 or 13 by 19 film. The easiest way to do that is just to click onto your page and if you go up here to this corner you'll see we have 8.5 by 11. I'm going to change that to 13 by 19 since that's the film we will be using today. And you just hit enter and there we have our page size. The other important part of setting up your job for repeatability and consistency is going to your tools window and setting up your options. This is very important. We'll start with general. As far as your undo levels, personally I prefer to have 50 so if I need to back up, I can back up to 50 times before I have to start over again. So it's a nice round number. I don't bother checking any of these because none of them have ever had any kind of application as far as what I'm doing. Resolution, most screen printers will do a resolution between 150 and 300. I usually leave mine at 300. You can also, on startup, you can have it show your welcome screen. You can have it start a new document, open an, up an existing document. I prefer the welcome screen. The reason for that is it will save my last five jobs I was just working on. So if I have to pull it up quickly, it's right there for me. Next, we'll go to display. Most of these things are Corel defaults and most of them could be left the way they are. As far as your preview fountain steps, 256 is the normal. Editing, again 15 degrees, three, uh, three points on the decimal places. Now, now we'll do snap to. This is very important. If you've ever run Corel and you're moving your artwork around on the page and it seems to jump and you can't get it into finite places, that means you're snapping to an invisible grid. On the page behind the window you see open, there is always a grid on the paper. Whether you see it or not, that's an option that you can choose within your toolbar. What happens when you have the snap to object selected, your artwork will start to jump in increments. So it's always best to keep that off. And I also show uh, snap location marks, I leave that off. Next we'll go to dynamic guides. This just basically shows you your zero degrees, your 90 degrees, your 45s. Uh, I usually leave those off because they just become more of an annoyance than anything else. Warnings, you can leave whatever the default is. Save, I usually do an auto backup every five minutes because there's nothing worse than working on a piece of artwork for an hour than watching your computer lock up on you and you've lost all your work. So set that to five minutes. I've made it a regular habit of saving upon starting or getting to any junction in my artwork where it's going to be a major uh, a major drama getting back to that point so if you set that automatic save for five minutes you won't have to worry about it now also make sure you know where that's going right now it's going into my users temporary folder which is also my artwork in progress folder memory again this is a default that you don't want to mess with plugins you don't mess with text now if you do your drop down you'll have paragraph font spelling and quick correct again most of these are due to the default of Corel and are fine edit text on the screen drag and drop editing 
uh, showing your handles. That's actually your bounding box that you will see. Uh, your line width, uh, your Greek text below, your pixel rates, characters during manual kerning. And kerning is basically the spacing that occurs between lettering when you're typing something out. Paragraph, again the defaults. Same with the fonts. You want to show true type fonts, show type 1 fonts, and both symbols. You don't want to show document fonts only because that will revert back to less fonts than what you would have with the normal Corel default. And here's the number of most recently used fonts. So if you're doing a design and let's say you're running within a parameter of five different font styles, this will remember the last five fonts that you use so you don't have to go searching through the long list again. Spelling, of course you want to do autocorrect, quick correct, that's all the defaults that are on that one. Now, when you get down to your toolbox, this is a long laundry list. You have connector tools. And again, I leave all these defaults the same. You may find as you're working with the program and you're doing particular tasks, you may want to change your defaults. And this is the way you do it prior to starting any document. So the next time I go to open up Corel Draw, these will all be saved. Uh, customization, you've got command bars, and this is your normal stuff, menu bar, status, standard, property, toolbox, text, zoom. I don't use the internet, print, merge, or transform because that's something I can go up here and find in my toolbars. It's not something that I use that often that I really want to have quick access to it. Document, general, it just shows your normal view, fill open curves. I leave this to the parameters that Corel has set up. I haven't really found any reason to change it. Page, again, here we go, page size. You can see here I've got 13 by 19. This is another way of changing it, so every time you open up a new document, you will automatically go to that 13 by 19 page size. Or you can set it from the printer that you're using. Since Epson is our general output printer, ranging from the 1400 all the way up to the 4800, you can go ahead and set your parameters for film size from your printer or from this toolbox window but making sure that both of them coincide. Layout, you can do a full page. You can either do it with a landscape or horizontal. Labels, I don't worry about. This is just all the different labels you can use within your printer. Background, you can either use a solid or a bitmap background. I just leave this to the default. And here's our grid. You can see here on our frequency is 4.0 per inch. But then again, this is the invisible grid that you don't normally see. You can show the option to show the grid, snap to grid. That goes back to that problem of your artwork jumping around. Rulers, it's always a good idea to have your rulers along your page. Uh, the nudge is 0.1%. The super nudge is 2 times 0 0.100 inches. And you also have a micro nudge. So instead of grabbing it by your mouse, you can actually use your arrow keys to move a piece of artwork. Down into styles is just the default. Same thing with the save. Published to the web, I've never used it. I don't find much use for it when I'm doing artwork. You may find that your needs change as you get into the program. Once you have all the parameters set, just push OK, and we're ready to go.